Hey Renewal family, happy Sunday. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Father's Day to you guys. My name is Alia, I'm in the residency program here at Renewal. Our mission is to renew, rebuild, and release people through the work of Jesus Christ. If you're new here, we'd love to connect with you. If you're on Church Online, click the New Here tab, fill out the Connect Card form. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, you can just go to RenewalChicago.com. If you have kids at home, we've got you guys covered. If you are on Church Online, go ahead and click the Kids tab. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, go to RenewalChicago.com. And our kids ministry has laid out all sorts of stuff there. We've got you covered with resources. And uh, let me just lead you guys in a little prayer before we head into worship. Father God, I just thank you that uh, in this time of uncertainty in this time of so much uh, polarization in our country that we just get to meet together um, be surrounded by fellow believers lord i just thank you for this opportunity to be in this time of technology where we can reach each other in this way father uh, on this day father's day i know for so many people it's a time of celebration a time of thanksgiving a time of appreciation and for others it is a hard day who maybe don't have their dad today or their dad wasn't a present time in their lives or maybe their dad was a hurtful person lord i just ask that for them specifically um, you would just remind them that they have a perfect heavenly father in you, Lord, for the men who are fathers and, or who are father figures in people's lives, that you would just give them supernatural strength to be able to touch the people in their lives, to guide them uh, in the way that, that you do, Lord. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. What's up, everybody? This is Damon again with Renewal Worship. So good morning, everyone. I'm um, so excited to be here this morning with you. I also have my friend Nani with us. So if we're going to go forth and worship, uh, do a new song that we haven't done before. It's called Refiner. Um, and I know that that's our prayer, that we want the Lord to come in and be a refining fire and to purify us and burn up anything inside of us that really shouldn't be, um, especially in this moment and in this season. So we just love God and we want to honor him with this worship. Amen. So let's go forth. Just where you need us Take me there, take me there What you need is just an offering It's right here, my life is here And now we are living Sacrifice for you You're a fire, the refiner I want to be consumed I want to be tried by fire, purify, you take whatever you desire, Lord here's my life, I want to be tried by fire, purify, you take whatever you Lord, keeps my life. If your glory wants to come in, let it fall. We want it all. Lord, your fire is consuming. Fill this place, set it ablaze, and now be a Purify. 
Father, thank you for that time of worship. It's uh, such a gift to be able to recenter and worship you um, together, even if it's from afar. Amen. Guys, I only have one announcement for you this morning. Worship Wednesdays, 6 p.m., YouTube Live. Join us. If you miss it for some reason, you can go back. It's on our YouTube channel, and you can see it there. That's all I have for you guys. Enjoy the rest of the service. Derek, John, Jaren, Chris, Daddy, Deepa, Shamar, Jonathan, Lavinia, Jonathan, Lavinia, the second, no, the second. first, the first. I don't know. Seven. I'm at twenty-four. Forty. Forty-one. Forty-one. Thirty-eight or thirty-nine. When we don't listen. When we don't behave. <laughs> oh, I when we don't listen. When we need to clean the house. Hi. That we all get together. Snuggling to him. Giving him hugs and kissing. What makes him happy is spending time with his family. When we behave and when we're with him. Having parties. He likes. Um, People coming over. He likes holidays. Yes. Yes. Daddy gets 
happy when he sometimes when he plays with us. When we were having kisses, <laughs> that the whole house is clean. When I hug him. He's good at making steak and ribs and all those yummy meat and lamb chops and stuff. For me chewing. Skin. <laughs> Do you want that? And making tacos. Making chicken. <laughs> and building. He exercises. Hot scotch. My tickliness. He tickles me. Coming to tackle on us and tickle us. <laughs> because he puts some songs on when I play with him. And he tells me funny stories and jokes. He does like all these vo silly voices. By juggling them you laugh. He drops things and then it's funny. And sometimes he does funny things. Like this. And that's I love it. I love you. He needs to fill with his. He has a lot of favorite foods. Lamb chops. He likes to eat spaghetti and meatballs. Salmon. Sushi. Broccoli and noodles and chicken. Tacos. Does he eat cheese balls? Pizza too. Clam chowder. And pizza. Daddy likes popcorn too. Look at Play basketball, spend time with him, and shoot basketball. Watch TV. Going to the playground with us, playing bat, playing uh, ball with me. Playing basketball with him, playing baseball. I like to make pancakes with him. Like rainy days, that's when we get under the hose and he sprays it. It paddles me. Play. I share my toys with that. He is always by our side and loving us every day. He is really kind and makes good tacos. I love when Daddy takes me to the beach. When we feel sad or something, he always comes and is asking what's wrong, so he feels really concerned about what's happening in our lives. He plays with us, that he that he eat. Eat. Mm -hmm. His hug. We will hug him. We love you, Daddy. You love Thanks you. for being a great dad to us. We love we love you, Daddy. You're a very great dad to us. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. Well, good morning, family. It is good to be with you all here at Renewal and happy Father's Day to all the fathers that have tuned in. I want to say thank you for all that you do. Thank you for being in the lives of your children. Thank you for all you do in our community. Thank you, fathers, for just being fathers and happy Father's Day to me, too. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have a good time today, hopefully eating some good food and um, and, and just having fun with my family. But happy Father's Day to you. And I, I know on this day that sometimes this is not always a joyous occasion for most people. Uh, and sometimes you have an estranged relationship with your father or you may have lost your father in the last year or even due to COVID-19. Just want you to know that as a church, we're with you, we're praying for you. And know that as the Bible says that, that God is near to the broken heart and he's also a father to the fatherless. So although we may be without, God is still with us. And that's a good word. That's good news. Amen. Hey, if you're new with us, I want to say just thank you for jumping online with us. If you would do one thing for me, click that new here button at the bottom of the screen or you can hit that get connected tab. Whatever link drops in there for you, I want you to hit that 
And I want, to, I want you to fill out the, the Connect card and give us a little bit of information about yourself because we want to know who you are. We want to know how you found out about us and how we can pray for you and get you plugged into our church a little bit more. So don't not hit it. Let us know who you are. And then also follow us on all our social media, our website, our Instagram, Twitter, our Facebook, and make sure you join our YouTube page because we put out Worship Wednesdays. We put out everything on that every week. You do not want to miss it as well as on our website. So thank you, thank you for joining us today on this Sunday morning. Um, we're going to continue now in the time of giving and our worshiping in our giving. So if you got your tithe and offering, I'd love for you to get it together right now. And there's many ways for you to give. You can give right now online. You can give by text. You also can give uh, by check if you want to mail it in. Uh, but I always say this, if you've never tried giving, then try giving today today and if you've done that then thank you for doing that go above and beyond that and as the new old testament talks about giving your first fruits give a give a tithe which is a 10 percent 10 percent of your salary um, and if you're already doing that thank you thank you thank you it's because of your giving and your recurring giving and continually giving to renewal that we're able to be the church not only for our people here in the city but also for the city itself you're already giving a tithe, then give above and beyond. Be a cheerful giver. Give till it hurts, because that's what Jesus did for us. He gave it all up for us, even to the point of death. I, even just talking about your giving, this week at Chicago Delivers, I've told you much about that. Uh, we've given to that. I was able to help start that with a few fellow pastors here and churches here in the city. Our church was a part of that. This week, we gave out hundreds of hot meals to people in need in our city. And we're gonna do it throughout the next several weeks. That's the next phase. We're gonna give out hot meals to people in need in our city because there's still people hurting due to COVID-19 and different things that are happening during this pandemic. So you be praying for us. Please keep giving to us as a church so we can be the church not only for our people, but for the city here in Chicago. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much for this time of giving. You are an awesome God. I thank you that uh, you've allowed us to, to have resources to share with one another and to give. God, I pray that you would cover us and keep us and allow uh, what we give to be extended far past what we could ever imagine and, and not only touch the people that are close to us, but the people throughout the city and world that need help and need to know you, Jesus. So use our resources, use what you've given us, God, for your glory and your glory alone. Thank you, God. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, last week we started a series entitled Worship Through the Psalms, and I'm not sure about you, but right now during this season with everything that's going on, I've just been in this space where I need to worship. I need to worship. I need Jesus. And, and hear me, the reality and the truth is, as I said last week, is that we're made to worship. We're made in the image of God, which means that we are made to worship God and Him alone. But the reality is, is that Here's the truth. If we're, if, we're, if we're not worshiping God because we're made to worship him, if we're not worshiping God, the reality is we're worshiping something or someone else. And that's the question we got to ask ourselves this morning is who or what are we worshiping? Is it God or is it something else? Who or what are we worshiping? Which brings us to this series, which I believe is going to be instrumental in our lives these next few weeks because many of our issues that exist here in society, that exist in our lives personally, I really believe it's because we haven't been truly giving God the worship that he deserves. You see, worship isn't just walking into Sunday service or online with us right now and raising your hands and raising your voice and saying hallelujah to the king of kings. No, that's part of it. But worship, hear me, is it's, it's our whole lives being offered to God. It's a fragrant offering uh, being offered to God. It's all of us, not just a part of us, but all of us giving everything to God, which, it, it, which is why, hear me, family, if, if we pay attention, hear me, as we go through this, this series, that, that's where God starts to, to work in our lives. It's, it's when we truly give him worship. It's where we really start to see not only change in our lives, but change in a world that needs to know him. And, and that's my prayer as we journey through the book of Psalms is that, 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 that God would meet you right where you are right now. That he'd meet you right there because I believe when we really become a people that truly worship God, we see the world change. 
And so we, we're jumping into the original hymnal, as you want to say, as I would like to say, the, the, the book of Psalms. So if you got it, go ahead and open up with me to Psalm chapter 16. That's where we're going to be in our time today. Psalm chapter 16. Psalm chapter 16. I'm, I'm going to give you a minute. And once you got it, go ahead and write got it in the chat. Psalm chapter 16, hear now the, the word of God, starting in verse 1. I, I love this psalm. He says, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord, and I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply their drink offerings of blood. I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You, sh you hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel in the night. Also, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure for you will not ab abandon my soul to Sheol or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life in your presence. There is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Very word of God. Amen. <clears throat> Today, I want to preach on the topic. I'm tired, but I still believe. I'm tired, but I still believe. Let's pray together. Father, right now, God, I ask that you would fill my body with your word, that you would decrease me and so that you may increase. Father, we need a word from you this morning. Allow those that are listening and watching to hear you and not me. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we all said together. Amen. Amen. Family, as I mentioned in the beginning, this season has been a trying one for me. And as it has been for many of you, it's been a tough season. I, I know you've heard me speak about being a, a black man in America and, and what that's like and living from and working from this place of not being equal before. But in the last months, the last few months of COVID-19 and the recent killings of black people, I got to tell you that uh, there has arisen more conflict and tension in my heart and soul than ever before. If I'm honest with you, if I can be honest with you for just a moment, go there with me. There's this lie that starts to creep in that says, I will never be enough. No matter my degrees, no matter my family or my job, my status. No, in most people's eyes, I'm still just another Negro. Or the other N word, which I'll refrain from saying, I'm just trying to be honest. See, when I see and I read about the countless black bodies that have been slain on American soil, it saddens me deeply that we still have to fight the same fight in America that we've been fighting for centuries. We just celebrated Juneteenth. We're still fighting the same fight. When I see George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, uh, Alton Sterling, Eric Garner, and sadly countless others, I see myself possibly laying on the ground killed by a white police officer when I hear of lynchings today. And I think about the countless years of slavery and Jim Crow law. I, I say, man, that is still here. When I look at the prison system and I see the disproportionate rates of blacks and brown people being locked up in prison for, for, for their whole lives, life sentences for misdemeanors, I say, just like Michelle Alexander in her book, this is the new Jim Crow. When I think about black on black crime, because I know somebody is asking that question, well, what about black on black crime? 
Well, in order to understand black on black crime, you have to understand where it comes from. You have to understand when you take a people and for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, family, black people have been treated like animals, not people, animals. In fact, they were three fifths of a person in the Constitution, three fifths of a person, family. We were treated like animals and had no rights. We were bred like dogs, stripped from our families, stuck in ghettos red lined so we couldn't actually get out of the neighborhood we were in we couldn't even have any upward momentum no matter how much money we made banks wouldn't loan us money there weren't banks in our neighborhood which creates now this crabs in a bucket mentality where i don't care about the person next to me or the person on this side i mean no i'm gonna try to get mine because i gotta get to the top of this bucket and you know what the, at the top of the bucket is it's majority culture seemingly it's white people and you know what that creates hopelessness amongst Black people. Animalistic mentalities. You've been treated like that for centuries. It saddens me. And here's the truth. Black people, I need y'all to hear this. Black people were once kings and queens that ruled the world. They taught everybody else everything. But here's the sad fact about that. That history has been scrubbed from our history books. It's been deleted out of the pages, especially here in America. So when you see somebody that looks like me, skin color, brown, black, like me, naturally, many think of us as less than, which brings me to today, because as a black man, I'm tired. I'm tired of having to prove myself. I'm tired of having to work harder than everyone else. I'm tired of always having to look over my shoulder. I'm tired. Which brings me to this psalm today because as I read it, you get the sense that David, he's tired. He's fearing for his life right here in Psalm 16. Nowhere else to turn but to God. And he calls out to him knowing that in him, when with everyone else against him, he is fully known and he has all he needs in God. And hear me, someone needs to hear that this morning. You're listening and you're just like me. You're in this time where, 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 where you're at your wit's end. Feels like your, your back is up against the wall. You have nowhere else to turn, turn. Feels like nobody is with you or for you. And you need to know, hear me, that God is for you. Remember the words, just like David says in verse 11, which I love this verse. He says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. You hear those words. Friends, hear me. Let us be reminded it's okay to be tired. It's okay to be weary. It's okay to be sad. But don't ever stop believing. It's okay to be tired. But don't stop believing. Amen? Amen. Well, last week we began this series and asking the question, I posed it, what is a psalm? Because many of us, when we're reading the psalms, we don't actually really know what they are. So by way of reminder, the book of Psalms has supplied believers for centuries some of the best loved Bible passages throughout centuries. It, it, it is a collection of 150 different poems that express a wide variety of emotions, and including love and adoration. Listen to this list, list, love and adoration toward God, sorrow over sin, dependence on God in desperate circumstances, the battle of fear and trust, walking with God, even when the way seems dark, thankfulness for God's care, devotion to the word of God, and confidence in the eventual triumph of God's purposes for the word. That, that world, that, that, that's good news. You see, the English title comes from the Greek word psalmos, which translates into Hebrew mizmor, which means psalm. Now, the Hebrew name for the whole book of Psalms is tehillim, which is translated praises pointing to the characteristic nature and the use of these songs as praises offered to God in public worship. 
So, so you get the gist of the book of Psalms, that it is really a book of praises and songs offered to God. Hence is why, if you've ever been to church for any amount of time, if you've heard a, a hymn saying, whether it be here at Renewal or some other church, most of those hymns and the words in those hymns are taken from these very psalms because they're songs. Today, our psalm is it's said to be written by King David. King David is a king that, who was known to have a heart after God. Now, he loved God, and despite his shortcomings, he would write at least 73 of the psalms that we know of, and probably more than that that we don't actually know the author of. David adored, and he worshiped God with all of him. And here in Psalm 16, I need you to hear me, David expresses the nature of one that is running after God. He's running after God. It's, it's a psalm where people are entrusting themselves to God. It, it's a psalm where David is expressing his, his confidence in God, his, his confidence resting solely in God. David lets us know that he is content in this life, not because of the work by his hands, but he's content in this life because of God. But hear me, as you read this text, you get the feeling that David, is, he's not in a place where, where most people would be expressing contentment. No, by reading this text, you get the feeling that David is in trouble. In the first two verses alone, David uses the different names for God. I need y'all to not miss this. He, he uses different names for God. He uses three different names as he appeals to God's sovereignty for protection David begins in verse 1, look at it with me. He says, preserve me, O God. God, for in you I take refuge. The word for God here would be pronounced Elohim. Elohim. And for my Bible thumpers in here, you would know that that's the word that that is used for God in Genesis chapter 1-1, where where God made everything. He would speak light and life into existence. He created created the whole earth and all the beasts of the field, that same God would take humans out of the, the dust of the earth and he would blow, blow breath into them and give them life. Here is David appealing to the God of the universe to protect them and be a place where he's able to take refuge. Don't miss what's happening here. And family, I'm not sure about you, but as I may mention in the beginning, in the days of COVID-19 and being a black man right now, there have been many days where I've laid on my face and I've called out to God and said, God, protect me and keep me. I need you. You see, you see, that's what David is doing right here in the text. He's seemingly saying, if God be for me, then who can be against me? And David moves on in the verse two and he says, I say to the Lord, you see that? He says, I say to the Lord right there in verse two. Here, David calls God by a second name. Now, this name in the original text would be pronounced Yahweh. This was God's personal name. This was a name that was never said out loud. It was only a name that was written down on paper. This is a name that they revered. They honored and respected God deeply. So they didn't say the name out loud. And it's kind of like when you grew up, as a kid, if you grew up like me, and some of y'all may not have grown up like me, but growing up, you didn't call a grown up or an adult by their first name. You didn't go around and be like, hey, what up, Bobby? What up, Sheila? How you doing? No, no, no. You said Mr. or Mrs. or Dr. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And it was followed by their last name, because if you called them by their first name, you were going to get it rep- reprimanded probably by the adult that you disrespected Or you're going to get it when you get home. Or in my case, you might have got it both ways. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen, somebody. You didn't call adults by their first name. Some of us running around talking about, what up, Bobby? What up? What up, Derek? And like, hey, wait a second. It always throws me off because I didn't, I wasn't raised that way. But just like I wasn't raised that way, and many of us weren't, hear me, the Israelites, they did not call God by his personal name because they honored and they respected their maker and their God. So what you see here in the passage, what you're getting from David is he's using the personal name of God. And while doing that, what he's doing is he's expressing a sense of relationship. He's expressing a sense of desperation with God. He's basically saying, I know you. I know you personally, God, and you know me personally. And I honor and respect you, God, and I'm calling out to you. I need you. Family in the world like today. Where there's this struggle to be known, there's this struggle to be acknowledged simply as an equal human being. Hear me, to be known by God 
someone who is honored and respected to be known by him allows me not to be shaken. Now, follow me. This means that you could say what you want about me. You could even think what you want about me. But I'm known by someone who sits far above you. And I know what he thinks about me. It's like the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's true when it comes to God. So let me add a little bit more to this. Your words and what you think about me will not hurt me because what God says about me trumps what you say and what you think about me. And the word of God lets me know simply, it lets me know that God spent time on me, making me in his image, y'all. He counts every hair on my head, even the hair that ain't even on my head. He knows all of those hairs that I've lost. (laughs) And in Psalm 8, it would tell me that he made me a little bit lower than the heavenly beings. And y'all hear me, he crowned me with glory and honor. It means God takes care and he loved me. So despite what you think or what you say about me, I know what God says about me. So hear me, family. Don't miss this. Beyond what, before you think about what everybody else is saying about you or what they're thinking about you, let us be reminded of what God says about us. David says, I love it. I say to my Lord. He moves on in verse two and he says, you are my Lord. The original word here would have been Adonai, which means Lord or master over. Uh, This was the most common or name for God that they would use. It it expresses just like Elohim, the the plural nature of God, the the Trinitarian God, the Father, the Son, and the the Holy Spirit. It, It was commonly used by the people of God to reverence God, not only as their maker and their ruler of everything, but hear me, the ruler and maker of them personally, them individually. So what you get here is that they're saying Everything I do, as you being Lord, everything I say, I I want it to be honoring to you, God. David is simply saying, I will serve you and you only, God. Now, with all of this, family, I've spent so much time on these first two verses, looking at these three names of God, because hear me, if you miss this, you will miss the significance of this psalm. God being Elohim, God being Yahweh, and God being Adonai. You will miss the significance here if you miss these three uh, names for God. See, David, hear me, isn't just calling out to anyone. He isn't just calling out to some God. No, he's calling out to the one and only true God of the universe. He's calling out to him and saying, help me. You see, in in verses three through four, David says, there are some who truly follow you and who I, I keep close. I love this. And there are some who follow another God who he says, essentially, I will not follow. And friends, I don't have time to preach on this topic, but I need some of you guys to hear me because there's some of us that need to be aware of the company we're keeping. In times like today, we need to be aware and make sure we are around people who are uplifting to our souls and not destructive. David says, I will hang with the ones who worship you like I do, God. The other ones, no, I'm going to leave them alone. Beware of the company you keep. He keeps moving in verse 5 through 6. David now describes his satisfaction with the Lord and his provision. He uses terms like, don't miss this. He uses portion, lot, lines, and inheritance, which evoke the allocation of land into family plots. It's like a rich man dividing up his inheritance amongst his kids. You get this, you get this, and you get this. This is what David's saying. And then he says that the lines have fallen for me in the beautiful places. Y'all see his language? This expresses contentment with the arrangements of one's life, seeing them as divinely or providentially ordered. Now, notice he doesn't tell us what it looks like, though. Ooh, I know I just stepped into somebody's neighborhood. He, he doesn't tell us that, that we're going to get the spouse we always wanted. He doesn't say that you're going to get this amount of money or, or this job. No, 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 no. He, he just says he's content. And that's key because especially in tough times like this, contentment, it's a struggle. Amen, somebody. How many of y'all have been wrestling within your soul? You, you felt restless. 
Y'all be honest. Family, and here's the truth. For many of us, the worst of COVID-19, and I'm not trying to come at anybody, but here, here's the truth. The worst of this season has been the fact that we've had to stay at home for three months, for some of us. That's been the worst thing for some of us. But for David, if you know a little bit about him, my man went through it. For years of his life, after being anointed as king, years, more than 10, he, he's running for his life. He, he's hiding in caves, eating mess, being hunted down like a dog for his life. And he's a king. He's about to be the king. Could you imagine that? But yet, when you read the text, he says, the lines you have drawn for me have fallen in beautiful places. How many of us can say that despite what's happening to us right now, we're content? We're content. <clears throat> you see, hear me, contentment doesn't lie in what you have or what is happening to you. Contentment lies in who's giving you identity. Let me say that again, because y'all might have missed it. Contentment doesn't lie in what you have or what is happening to you. Contentment lies in who gives you identity. Which means, don't miss it, it's like the song says, if I have God and nothing else, then I have, y'all know it, everything. David says, the Lord is my portion and not his kingdom, not anything else. He says, the Lord, this is what David is expressing, which is to be the expression of the heart of the believer. Now, now let me ask you, though, because we got to pause and say, is that true of us? Is that really my heart? If I don't have anything else, if I'm stuck in COVID-19 for a long, long time. Am, am I, if I just got Jesus, am I content? I have you with nothing else. I have everything. Now, as we round third and we head home this morning, David, in verses seven through eight, he expresses his delight in God's presence, where he says in verse seven, follow me with this. He says that the Lord gives him counsel, which results in the assurance of stability in verse eight. This begs the question, who gives us counsel? Because if we're not getting counsel that is from God or that is godly counsel, the result will be instability. Family, who's counseling you? Where do you get your counsel? Again, beware of the company you're keeping. Now, all of this results in verses 9 through 11, and I, I love reading the Psalms because... It's almost as if as you're reading this psalm in Psalm 16 that David, he's been reminding himself who God is throughout the whole psalm. It's indicative of worship, isn't it? It's, it's kind of like when you walk in on a Sunday morning in the church and you may be feeling something. You may be down in the dumps. You may have had some crazy things happen to you that week. Or, or, or you pick up your Bible and you start reading and you woke up with all this mess on your heart and these trials and tribulations that you're going through. And then you start flipping the pages and you start reading about how good God is and how much he loves you. Or you hear the preach word showered over you and how good God is. What happens is that you start raising your hands and you start giving God worship. See what happens is when you hear about a good God, it lends to our worship. It leads to that. That's what you see in this text. David starts the psalm with remembering who God is, all-powerful, all-knowing, personal, and ruler of all things, which leads to verses 3 through 8 where David starts listing off how because of who God is, he will follow God and God only. For God is his portion, he says. And in verse 8 says, because of that, no matter what comes his way, he will not be shaken. See, these verse, verses right here, these first eight verses that culminate in David saying, my heart is glad here in verse 9. My whole being rejoices and my flesh dwells secure for you won't cast me to shield. That's the place of gnashing and teeth. That's hell. That's where the wicked will dwell. 
So hear me, you get the sense that David knows he has done some dirt. And he's thankful not only that God is a good God, but God is a merciful God. Oh, I know somebody's amening right now. Thank you. Thankful that God is not just good, but he's also merciful. See, some of us are missing this. I mean, how many of you are glad that you can run to a God who will not only love you, he will forgive you, and he will also protect you when you're not worthy? How many of you are thankful for a merciful God who will love you even though you're truly unworthy? Y'all, that's good news. And David says, my whole being rejoices. He ends in this passage, and I love it in verse 11. He says, look at it with me. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures for evermore. I, I love this verse because, hear me, it, in it, David expresses the fact that God leads him. God gives him joy and pleasure, but don't miss it. He also uses words here like fullness and forevermore, which gives us this understanding that not only God, not, not, not that God not only leads us, don't miss it, in the place we're in right now. But God also leads us on throughout eternity. Family, that's good news. And, I, and I'm not sure about you, but in times like today, as I've been saying all throughout this sermon, I need to be constantly reminded of the good God I serve, the God that loves me, that he leads me, he gives me joy, he will never leave me nor forsake me, but he'll keep on trucking with me on through eternity. That's good news. See, and there's someone that's listening right now, and you need to hear this just like I needed to hear. You're going through it. The way you've been doing your life and you've been working through it just won't cut it anymore. You don't have the strength to fight your battles anymore. Whatever thing or person or status that, 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 that you believed in that defined you, it's not working anymore. You, you believed in God, and now you're doubting. Or maybe you never believed in God, and this is the first time you're actually hearing that God loves you. I need you to hear me wherever you are this morning, just like David here, where he's walking through Psalm 16 and he's writing and David's reminding himself of the good God he serves. Let us also too be reminded of the good God we serve, a God who not only hung the stars in the sky and knows them by name, but a God who also made us in his image, a God who saw us in our sin, destined for the cross, destined for death. We should have been on that cross, but instead he says, no, 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 I love my people. I'm going to send my son Jesus to die on the cross for them and take the wrath of mine on himself, take their sin on himself. Jesus dies the worst, worst kind of death and he hops off the cross or he doesn't hop. They actually carry him off the cross and take him to a tomb and he lies there for three days and then he rises from the dead power in his hands to be seen by more than 500 people dwells with his disciples for 40 days then he rises off in a cloud and goes to heaven and I, I can imagine the di disciples and the people that have just seen Jesus rise from the dead they've seen him dwell with him they're looking off into the, the clouds and they're they're sad they're tired they're upset maybe even angry different ones and then two men in white robes, they come down and they look at him and say, why are you gazing? Why are you looking into heaven? That Jesus that just went, on, went away, he, he's coming back one day and he's coming back for you. Basically, hear me, don't miss this. They say to them, look, I know you're tired. I know you're sad. I know you're angry. But don't ever stop believing. He's coming back for you. Family, again, as I told you in the beginning, I had to remind myself this week as I'm studying, and I need to, let, I need to remind you too, it's okay to be tired. It's okay to be upset. It's okay to be sad. Whether that's from the racial injustice, COVID-19, the job loss, or just plain old struggle. But don't stop believing. Don't stop trusting in Jesus. And maybe you're hearing this for the first time. 
and you haven't placed your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, hear me, there's no better time than right now to trust him and believe as Jesus, in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Forgiveness is still there. He still wants to walk with you. He still wants to be with you. Hear me, family. It's okay to be tired. But don't stop believing. Don't stop. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this morning. You're an awesome God. God, I just ask that you would, you would give us the strength to continue on. That we wouldn't stop believing, God, that we know even in those places where we're tired, where we're weary and we're sad or we're upset. That you're a God that never stops. You're a God that still loves. You're a God that still cares. God, I pray for the person that needed to hear that this morning, just like I did. That they would know that you're near. You're close. You can heal the brokenhearted. And you want to be in relationship with us. So, God, let us never stop running after you. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus and everyone said together, amen. Family, as we come to the table this morning, get whatever you have in your house, if you have some bread or cracker, uh, and let's just sit down and let's have a meal together. That juice, wine, whatever you may have. And let's just remember Jesus, the goodness of our Savior, the goodness of a God who, although we may be tired, we may be weary, we may be upset, he never is. He's still there with us. He doesn't leave nor forsake us. So take that in your hand and let's remember him this morning. On the night that he was captured or betrayed, he took in his hand and he broke bread and he said, take this, eat this, and do this in remembrance of me. Let's take and let's eat together. Second, he took a cup, some wine. He said, this is my blood. As you drink this, do this in remembrance and forgiveness of your sins. So let's drink together from this cup and be thankful for the forgiveness of our sins. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you for your blood that's been shed for us. Thank you for your body that's been broken and given up for us. Let us never forget how good you've been, God. And let us run after you with fervor, with all we have for the rest of our lives. Amen. Amen. Well, family, I love you. It's always good to be with you. I can't, be, can't wait to be back with you in some time, hopefully. But I want you to hold on to those words. Even though you may be tired, you may be weary right now, you may be in a place where you feel like giving up. Hear me, don't stop believing. God is with you, he's near to you, he loves you, he will continue to care for you and keep you. And just like David it does in this text, keep running after God. 
remind yourself of the goodness of God as you read the scriptures, and you listen to sermons, you listen to music, and you walk with a company that keeps you uplifted. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day, y'all. Eat some good food. Have a good day. Take care. God bless you.